Michael, it's great seeing you. And just so you know, from the last time I've seen you, I have had the pleasure of wearing this shirt in several of my interviews because it actually is one of my favorite shirts that I love to wear. I got to thank you for that. Because, of course, you gave this to me when we had a chance to meet. Now it's been, like, what, two years ago when we first talked about the show? It's got to be three years. Three? Four years. <laughs> Man, let me tell you something. The quality on this thing is amazing. That's sweet. Yeah. Well, I'll tell the, tell the guys down at Renegade. Oh, that my. Could, yeah, it... the, the guys that do the T-shirts. Yeah, yeah. Well, great, Matt. Well, you know, thanks to Bowie for having – Create is such a, a career everlasting that, you know, it's it's something to wear his name on your chest. You know? Yeah. I, like I said, man, seriously, one of my favorite shirts. I got to thank you for that. And I got to thank you for the interview that we did have a chance to do. But who would have thought doing that interview was almost like saying the beginning of the world changing would never have thought that, my friend. Mind blown, you know. Yeah, like, you know, everybody's got the stories for sure about things that uh, didn't transpire, plans that couldn't be made, all that kind of stuff. Luckily, I was completely unscathed. Family was well, nobody, Good. I caught it. I was sick for about a week and a half, but no, I'm I'm boxed out. So no uh, trips to the, uh, the Emerge or anything like that. You know, lots of folks not so lucky. So, you know, I got nothing to complain about. Like every time I find myself just wanting to whine a little, you know, I think, oh, man, you got nothing compared to what's going on in the world. Let's not go there. Holy moly. Oh, absolutely agree with you. Look, folks are probably wondering, OK, they're seeing this shirt. We're talking about something that happened beforehand. You are the mastermind behind one of my all time favorite artists, because I've always said that. David Bowie, the fact that he was on Soul Train, and that's when I was introduced to him, for me, said it all, because back in the day I was such a fan. How are you connected with the legacy of David Bowie? Yeah, well, for sure. Same for me. Young kid, 14 years old, get the first record, see him on TV. Um, you know, being into music myself at that age already, wanting bands, uh, uh, starting my first little bands, all that kind of stuff, right? So, um, and then of course it was for me with him. It it really became. I, I love the style, you know. I've always been into fashion, so I loved I love the style. I love that he sang all these different genres of music because I grew up listening to everything from country and western to piaffs. I I love show tunes. I've been singing Sinatra my whole life as well. So, you know, the guy had such a great range of emotion and, and notes, and uh, he really gave me something to aspire to. In the day, I was aspiring to all those vocalists, uh, Freddie Mercury and uh, uh, Russell Mayall of Sparks was a, a real favorite of mine too, just big expressive singers. And uh, so then it all kind of started from there and then just singing Bowie tunes as a young guy. And then it's funny, you know, not to babble on about this, but um, it's it's uh, the, the idea behind, there's a film being made right now called Being David Bowie. Oh. And it's I've had a filmmaker traveling around with me for about four or five years through COVID, that different, you know, conversations, research pieces, all this kind of idea. And the, the nature of the story is really about how you know, I've kind of fought the guy's, um, you know, persona. As a young guy, I embraced it. I was totally dressing like I'm being a freak, you know. Um, then then I kind of, you know, as we all do, you start to see, oh, the, the industry's corrupt. And, and uh, you know, he. I felt like he'd kind of sold out by the time he hit Let's Dance. And that, not as he hit let's dance scary monsters the album that just was released before let's dance is probably the best sorry about that is probably the best um you know album outside of ziggy or something in terms of a statement about his life and about the music business and all that kind of stuff so 
so yeah like it goes back it's deep like it's the whole thing and then of course and i never thought i had a bowie tribute in the 80s mm -hmm. and uh and then I put it away. I didn't like doing it. And then I was, you know, trying to be my own artist and produce my own music and, you know, be my own guy. And, uh, and then uh, when I came back out about six, seven years ago, I guess like 2014, what's that making it like seven, eight years ago. Right. Um, I came back out and started singing Buble and Sinatra tunes in theaters and uh, hadn't, hadn't been out for 30 years and and then bowie passed and then people asked and i thought you know at the end of my life and the end of my career it, it may be the the most poignant thing i could do was to uh pay tribute to to the music and the fashion and all that kind of stuff and my show is not i'm not trying to be david bowie that's my that's my stock line you know it's my tribute to david bowie and, and uh seems to be going really well like it was great to be back on track and back into the theaters. We left right at the height. We were just on a trajectory that was, you know, to the moon, as they say. Well, for folks who don't know exactly what this is, what is this show exactly? How does it work? What do we see? How are you part of it? What happens? Uh, okay. So, you know, like many tributes, it's a night of, just david boy music we play from the beginning we start with space oddity we end with lazarus we do all the hits in between for the most part there's stuff we have to miss because you could just you know your show could end up being three hours long so um you know i have a a, a killer band behind me and uh and i'm i'm wearing the blue the iconic blue suit through the show and in fashion and in moments, I have um, different women dressed as different Bowies who also come out and sing uh, the Annie Lennox duet of Under Pressure as Annie Lennox. And uh, so I don't try to dress as Ziggy or anything of that nature. You know? I've but it keeps the show going. It keeps the show going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, in the old days, in my old show, I had eight costume changes and I was just all layers. So I just jumped backstage and just like, you know, Velcro off and boom, a pair of somebody else. Right? But uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit, it's a, it's a bit more organized, not so chaotic now. But, but uh, yeah, like, so it's a visual. It's obviously a musical. There's some kind of theater bits to it. You know, I have a, an empty director's chair sitting on stage. It's sort of with a you know, as, as if he was sitting there, that kind of idea, you know, which the, the Ziggies and the, uh, the Bowies, uh, come out and use the thin white Duke and the, the Ziggy and, and, uh, yeah. So that's kind of it, you know, and it's a theater, it's a soft theater. But how do you coordinate? Because, uh, he's had a massive amount of hits. And not just a massive amount of hits, but just legendary songs in general. How did you figure out and going through this catalog and saying, I am going to take this, condense it to this. I could not imagine your head must have exploded several times in going, OK, I'm going to take this. Oh, no, but I got I don't want to forget that. So, OK, I'm going to take no. But if I take yeah. but it works better with like this song goes with this. How did you do that? Oh, well, the order of songs, it's just chronological. So it's, you know, it's a histography of, of where it starts. So, so as a listener in the show and a viewer, because all our multimedia begins to become more effect, you know, we're working on a, a slicker light show that, you know, for the Ziggy stuff, it just incorporates seventies lighting techniques and um, projections we're using. Um, sort of reflect the time or uh, a genre or a milieu of the video of his, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I lost the question, sorry. It's just that there are so many How do songs. I get the material, right? Yeah, so right. You're figuring so, it well, out. It's pretty, you know, in the end, it's pretty obvious. Like we've had to lose a few songs, um, later stuff that our crowd is. 45 to 65 let's call it right like 
you know, there's there's some young people in the audience, but often they're there with their parents, right? So, um, you know, what folks want to hear is they want to hear the Ziggy, they want to hear they want to hear the earlier stuff, you know. By the time you get up into, we've tried a couple of different pieces and people don't even recognize them, you know, um, because they were they were they were hits. They got airplay, but you know they played to a different audience and we we pull out um afraid of americans and you can imagine that you know like you can see the energy levels in the audience right so in in something like that people get pretty shocky about it you know and uh so yeah so there's you know i mean they love they love the stuff they know right just like everyone it's yeah yeah i mean it's like for me golden years and fame like if if you didn't sing that, I'd, I'd have to burn the house down, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, it's hard because I'll tell you, Young Americans, that, that was my first Bowie album. And, and uh, man, it's like every track, right? I keep, I keep thinking I should take, you know, I mean, we would have maybe been on track to doing something like this now if we hadn't got derailed for the last three years, two and a half years. Um, but have people... You know, because you have to reinvent the show. So we try to, every time we go back in, we want to go back with new tunes, some new costumes, some new multimedia, right? And that way we can build a nice circuit in Ontario. That's that's the business plan, right? Um, so you got to be fresh all the time. And uh, I've thought, you know, wouldn't it be fun to take the classic albums approach, but with Bowie and just like just tour, you know, put a bunch of hits in the first set or whatever, you know, just to kind of, do it and then like do a second set full-on young americans or full-on scary monsters or full-on ziggy stardust you know everybody has to be classic guys do. um so you know like there's so many it's just like so much great material right the best you know, material no one even knows you know, you know what i love about doing this interview with you and this is the second time we've done it i can see how much fun you are having not just talking about it, but the fun you must be having doing it. It really is like, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> one after two years and having the COVID and, you know, kind of got me respiratory, you know, I was, I was wondering, you know, about my lungs and that kind of stuff. And, uh, so I, I was, uh, I was nervous about getting back on stage after two and a half years of being off stage. I was never nervous about it being off stage for 30 years because I felt like I was a younger guy, you know? Mm. <laughs> so, so now I brought a, a, an old buddy of mine into the band, play a second guitar and some keys and stuff, backgrounds. And, uh, and he's, he hasn't been on stage in 40 years. And he's like, you know, this is, you know, what a treat at this age of our lives, right? To be able to go out. And I surrounded myself with all these hot Humber kids right like pay the price you know pay the rate and get these kids who are you know i'm meeting a lot of these kids on the stage for the first time at the night like when i go to introduce people on the stage i have to always kind of remember and then i'll always make note i'll say i met this guy two hours ago right these kids just show up no rehearsal no nothing they just come that's the chop they have right and uh yeah it's outstanding so the band just cooks and um and we get better as we get playing like by the time we closed out we closed out the region with the last show we did in oshawa we filled the house there and uh um we just come off a bunch of dates and we were so tight you know wow. expensive yeah. to rehearse these guys <laughs> yeah if i got feeling you know how to pull that off though what do you think it is that has made uh, David Bowie, such a special entity. I know for myself, um, the thing that I will always remember, I mean, I mentioned about Soul Train, and to me that was very important because back then, of course, Soul Train, a lot of black artists. And the only artists I remember who were Caucasian on it was David Bowie, Elton John, uh, Average White Band, Average and, Casey, White yeah. and Casey, Casey and the Sunshine Band. At that time, that was it. And it always stuck out in my head that an artist like David Boy was able to cross over 
like that to wherever he wanted to. The other thing that always will always stand uh, for me, the interview on MTV. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Always. What do you think it was about him that made him such a legend? And though he's passed, you you mentioned David Bowie. Respect is always the key thing about his legacy. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, from every every indicator, he was an amazingly great guy. You know, just a nice guy to work with. And you know this, really. Like, you know, you and I have been in the business our whole lives, and that the people you want to work with are the people who are good to you and that, yeah. you know, treat you with respect as somebody helping support their career or whatever happens to be right. A fan or um, a grip, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so there was, you know, that I think made people want to work with the guy. I think musically, one of the greatest, smartest things he ever did was um, begin surrounding himself with just great creative players. So, you know, I can't imagine. I mean, I've heard the tales about making scary monsters where Rip goes into the studio and they just let the the tracks that they have roll so far and Rip just starts noodling over the whole thing and then and then says, you know, they're like, okay, well, let's go do this or whatever. And he's like, no, no, I got that. You got it. You know, and he leaves kind of thing. You know, mm. it in that way and then of course shapes the entire sound of that record right so in that way a lot of it is hey a lot of it is um uh, yeah surrounding yourself with people like that you know and mm -hmm. adrian blue and and then having the core guys when it gets caught the uh you know core players that that kind of know you know help him write songs in his key and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, no. So, smart guy. I mean, just look at all the stuff, right? Like, just, I tell you, like, one of the greatest takeaways in my life from him was, you know, if you want to stand out in life, just do exactly the opposite that everyone else is doing. Bang on. You know? Bang on. Even right down to his tribute goodbye video to everybody when we didn't know he was leaving us. Like, wow, who does like, that? Wow. Yeah, who does that, right? Like, just the whole, his whole existence is like this giant piece of art. And that's what um, Scary Monsters, again, to keep referring back to that, because I think it's a really overlooked album. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, for people who want to kind of really understand the guy more, that's an album that... Um, I could really help, you know, define sort of where he was and reasons why he stopped touring and dealing with sickness. There's all these allusions to sickness through his whole life, right? And mental illness, you know, and there's all kinds of stuff going on that made him. And then, and then just again, surround yourself with people who are goers and that want to do stuff. I remember a story when I was a kid reading a biography about him and I did it, you know, tried to do it at my earliest bads or whatever this idea of, um, you know, he's playing a gig and he rents a limo and he's got no money. He's like living above a garage and driving a Volkswagen and he gets the limo to pick him up around the corner and then all his fans jump into the limo, drive around the corner, get out in front of the venue, all the, the entourage, you know, that kind of stuff during the early Ziggy stuff, right? And then just everybody's like, who is this guy, right? Like marketing genius. You know, branding genius, right? When and how do we get to see the shows? Where's it going to be touring? So we're, you know, basically looking at Ontario being all over Ontario. So um, Oshawa, then the summer, we're trying to work on some, a lot of the festival guys are still not really, you know, up and rolling like they were before. And so the summer's going to be soft, I think. Give us a chance to work on some new stuff. And then we roll into the fall and we we're Peterborough and Aurelia. We're back in Toronto. We found a haunt there now, the medley. Um, uh, looking at maybe a date in Montreal, hopefully Cornwall oh. again, Ottawa, you know, like just doing it around. We promote like crazy. So, if you, you know, if it's your hometown and you're a Bowie fan. I'm sure you'll hear about it. And very quickly, merch. Are folks be able to get this kind of a shirt? Yeah, at the show, for sure. And there's my other one that says in big letters, Bowie lives. And 
I mean, I always have a funny story about that being in China wearing that shirt and uh, walking around a market in Shanghai and this uh, a, uh, Caucasian guy goes whipping by on his moped and he goes, he does, you know, as he's whipping by. <laughs> oh, man. Michael, I got to say, man, thank you so much for the interview. Thank you for the shirt. But more importantly, man, thank you for keeping this legacy alive and well because it is so important that artists like him are not forgotten and given reasons why he is known as a legend and you are part of keeping that legacy alive. Thank you for the interview. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing the show when it comes to Toronto. And man, just thank you for, like I said, doing what you're doing, my friend. Thank you, Rudy. Thanks again for your time, man. It's great to talk to you again.